in fact. Before they won the Carabao Cup and after, 72% before, 55% uh, this season, resting on their laurels somewhat. Uh, now, how would you say the bookies, how would you have the bookies set up for this? Uh, let's well, say... I saw Eddie Howe whinging on about injuries today, oh. so... There you go. Harping on. OK, uh, let's take a look. We've got the odds, here they are. So, Manchester United are favourite to advance to the next round. Newcastle coming in at 6-5. to five. Rob Dawson uh, joins us now from Manchester to look ahead to the tie. Rob, this is the last thing Ten Hag needs, isn't it? A Carabao Cup tie that actually matters against a proper team. Yeah. Um, simply put, you could probably do with a nice winnable home game against a, um, a lower league team to, to build some kind of confidence and some momentum. You know, they need some kind of reaction after what happened in the Manchester derby on Sunday. The last thing that Ten Hag needs now is a game against Newcastle, a dangerous game where they could possibly get knocked out of the Carabao Cup. And then the dark clouds start gathering all over again and, and you, you move on to Fulham in the Premier League on Saturday, another tricky game. And ultimately, this is all down to Man United just not playing well. They're just not playing well enough to feel confident against any opposition. And, and every game at the moment looks like it's dangerous. List of injuries that I'm seeing here at Manchester United. Ahmad Diallo, Jaden Sancho, who's not by the way injured, but the manager just refused to bring the players back. Casemiro, who's coming back from injury. Look show. Taran Malasia, Aaron Wambasaka, and Lissandro Martinez. So it's Casemiro, Lissandro Martinez. Only Lissandro Martinez and Casemiro are the only players here if I look at this list. And look sure, yeah, the three of them and look sure are the ones who could start if they are fit for Manchester United. So, to be saying that United uh, have so many lists of injuries that they cannot make an impact, that is very wrong. By the way, people, hello guys, welcome back to the Football Connect. I'm your host, Sam, and we are back again with another one. We are looking at how Manchester City United will line up against Newcastle in a game that is starting maybe in the next two hours, my time where I am. Yeah. It's not looking good because the one thing that is very certain, Manchester United has to put a strong team for this game. They have to put a strong team that is going to perform, that will bring something that maybe a lot of people would be proud of. Because at this moment, the pressure is so much on Eric Tenag. But either way, they're playing in Newcastle that also has so many injuries. So you might want to hear what happens, yeah, what, what we'll see. But most of the players like Diallo, Sancho has not been playing either, but it's not they. Taron Malasia, of course, is out, but he doesn't play every time. Wamba Saka, you may disagree or agree between Dalot and Wamba Saka. Who starts? There's always a confusion between those, but the question is this. Who will win? Who will win in this game? Of course, a lot of eyes are on Eric Tenag. We need him to perform. We want to see him do something. So there's a lot of people are going to be asking questions. We want to see how the game will be played on. Is it going to be challenging? There are so many questions that are being asked over this game. But one thing I know for sure is going to be exciting. But let me hear what these guys are saying. Exactly what are they expecting? Marcus Rashford, of course, he has to be rested. But you need to win something. You need to find confidence on some places. So... Players like Marcus Rashford has to come back. Bruno Fernandes, so many people have been questioning if he's even capable of being a captain of Manchester United. These are the games that maybe he'll find himself and maybe prove something to the to the world that he deserves the position he's holding as the captain of Manchester United. So many questions that are being asked here. So many players who, so many people don't believe that they deserve to even have a chance over this game. So, it's going to be exciting to see, but I'm looking at the players who are totally, totally unavailable, and I can only mention three out of the list that has been provided of players who not feature in a Manchester, Manchester United game. So let me hear what they're going to say as we continue with the video. Newcastle's not going to play a proper team. They can't play a proper No, but team. the worry is even their fringe players are going to give... That makes it worse, though, doesn't it? Man United a game. <laughs> and, I mean, you can look at it that way, yes, because they'll be, they'll be given everything. Yeah. But at the same time, you've got to think that United's going to put a proper team. Yeah. yeah. Cause Rob, they go full to strength win. tomorrow, imagine, yeah? They have to win this game. There'll certainly, I mean, there'll be players back. You'd expect Reguilón will play. Varane was on the bench on Sunday. He'll play. There's a possibility of Casemiro. You know, beyond that, the, the other injury concerns are all long-term injuries, so they won't be back. You know, there won't be massive changes to the team. But they, 
Ten Hag is in a situation now where he just can't afford to rest anyone either. You know, possibly that he would maybe look at resting someone like Marcus Rashford or Bruno Fernandes for these type of games, but he just can't afford to. You can't afford to lose the game and get knocked out. He's just in that situation that managers find themselves in now where they're going game to game. They just There's no credit in the bank there from what they've done this season, and he just can't afford to lose. So, you know, you end up having to pick Rashford, you end up having to pick Fernandez. I, I, I guess there'll be United fans watching this thinking, well, Rashford isn't playing well enough anyway, so so you should drop him and play Garnacho. And Fernandez isn't playing well enough and drop him. But if he was to, to rest all those players and get, get knocked out, there'd be more questions about Ten Hag. It's almost a lose-lose situation for Ten Hag. You know, like Craig just said, you know, win and, and you were expected to against a team, a, a weakened Newcastle team probably lose and it's another disaster. I hope the players are not listening to his uh, pre- and post-match press conferences because they'll be having a giggle in the dressing room as you do. If your manager comes out and he's talking nonsense, the players the players talk. Yeah. And he has been. I mean, he's been... Yeah, the Ajax statement was strange, wasn't it? That you couldn't have... His Manchester United team couldn't play like Ajax because he didn't have the players to play that sort of style. Yeah. I, you know, I think the, the quotes have been multiple, but certainly from the weekend when he talked about going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, in the first half, and there was the list. The list was sort of endless. And look, I don't know what the situation is with the players listening to him and not behind the scenes. Whatever it is, good or bad, he has to get them on board mm. quickly, extremely quickly. How does he do that? Well, I think he has to just wean out the ones that are that are passengers, uh, on and off the field. Uh, I think you have, and it's been well documented, you know, the captaincy of Bruno Fernandes. I uh, took Hoyland off uh, at the weekend. He played... Is there too much made about that? Because when we talk about captain's armbands, you guys are never really that excited yeah, but... about who has it. No, like, never... Is it a big deal? But I look at him, and I looked at him, and he wasn't the only one, because when Anthony came on, he was so petulant, it was, it was unbelievable. In fact, if you could get Anthony um, and Jadon Sancho out of that club tomorrow, they probably would, but there's a big financial... Huge financial outlay there, but when I look, when I looked at the second half in particular, there was one moment with uh, Bruno Fernandez when City had a free kick, uh, and it was a bit of a non-event. But he would not move; he refused to budge more than three or four yards away from the ball. Right, just refused, and City refused to take the free kick. I can't remember who it was, and he he, he flat out refused to move. It was utter petulance. And he walked after it as well. It was utter petulance, and I just think that that. That trickles all the that has already trickled all the way through, I think. And, and there's too many as well as some weak players, there are too many bad apples at that club. Right. So you've got the worst of both worlds. I, th I think sometimes you get pushed into a position where I'm going to sacrifice a bit of quality for somebody who I think is going to run around for night. Right. Minutes and do all the dirty stuff for 90 minutes. So where someone like McTominay comes in, that kind well, of... And that's and I guess that's where somebody like Bruno Fernandes is maybe a reason you leave him out, because when you've got the ball... Yeah, but you drop you your captain them. and you lose, and then it just snowballs even more. Well, but that's it? what's happening anyway. You know, there comes a time where you go, right, we need to just... don't lose a goal, we defend, we make sure we defend, and then we and then we start building from there. But is tomorrow the time to do that against Newcastle B? Well, well, yes. If you're not going to play against Newcastle's first team, what better opportunity is there to just eke out a win? And then you decide how you do it. If you think that for some reason you play all your so-called superstars and you go and beat Newcastle B, if you think you can do that, then that's what you do. But there comes a time where you, you sacrifice a bit of quality for just, I'm going to get something from this guy. And that's what I need right now. Uh, so, so many people might not want to talk about this, but there are a lot of things that, is, that has happened. When we look at how Manchester United were before the derby and how now we look at them after the derby. We need to talk about some few things that we saw from that game. And also talk about the, the things that we saw going outside, out after the game and what the manager says. Of course, Manchester United, it looks like the people that are expected to be the superstars are disappointing. Marcus Rashford, I have no idea where the form is. Bruno Fernandes, the captain, the guy who's supposed to be the leader of the club, he just is just doing some things that you not even expect from him, even any reasonable captain. And you wonder that 
Harry Maguire, of course, there was some bad performance, but he was never the player that you'd see him throwing the hands up in the air. While some people are looking at you for leadership, throwing leg your, your hands in the air, or refusing to move out of the ball, trying to eat some time, like you are supposed to be the captain of the team. Everyone who are, who are watching the game, everyone who, was in the, who is in that game is there hoping that you're going to lead this team to get something. So, of course, there are these little things, this little nudge that Eric Turner gets to get out of this Manchester United squad if he's to hope to get something out of the game, if he's to hope to get something out of this team. Because at the moment, with what we're seeing, it seems like he's failing. There is job right now to do to actually show that style of leadership for him just to be a leader into the squad. It looks like Eric Tenag is failing and so, so many questions are asked. Exactly where is he going with the squad? And now he makes it worse. Now that's, that's when I tell you that I don't think there are even any leadership characteristics in this manager, Eric Tenag. You cannot come out after losing a derby and tell the world that you will never play the reason why the club hired you the type of football the football that you're playing the exciting football that they show you playing at ajax you cannot come out on live television on a reporter and you tell them that you never play because you are coming out to the world and saying that you don't trust your players because he said we don't have the players in other words, you are saying that the people who are supposed to get into the ground to fight for you, you are saying to the world, you do not trust them. And now the question comes, where do you see him going next? What do you expect to see from him? Because any person with a brain will never come and attack his own team. Any person with a brain. Of course, the fans will do it, but we don't have a camera in our faces where we are talking about how much we don't believe in our squad. And if we don't believe in our squad, the one person you would expect to believe in this squad is the manager. 90% of the players who were in that squad, he bought them. 11 players is brought into the Manchester United squad. And in a City game, he played an entire second half without either of the players he has bought. Meaning that he's not trusting them. Tell me how that helps a team to build their confidence. Tell me how that helps anybody. To have confidence and knowing that the person who's putting you into this war zone believe in you how does that help you to come and fight for the badge to come and fight for his name so people tell me i don't think that these guys will ever throw their manager under the bus they believe they'll fight for him but he's coming out on live television and he is making it possible for the dressing room to turn against him he first went and after Jordan Sancho he was one player with so many people forgive him for that now he's coming after the whole dressing room he does not trust the players the people you bought the people you spend so many million of pounds it's crazy it's really crazy so there are so many things that Eric Tenag is saying so many things that you see that that's a dummy move for a person to make that this guy is making on a daily basis now, as things seems, it looks like he's just digging his grave and keeps digging his grave and keeps digging his grave. It's just a matter of time before, you know, the sagged word is actually being done because so many fans are already calling for his head. Where is he going next? Rob, where do you stand on Craig's bad apples comment? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably broadly agree with that, I mean, there are plenty of players there who, who just aren't good enough. You know, it's a simple um, answer. Um, and I think we've seen that not just this season, you know, for the last sort of decade. United continue to sign players who aren't good enough. The recruitment hasn't been good enough, even under a Ten Hag. You know, you say that he probably wants to get Jaden Sancho out, and that's probably true. That's not a player he signed, but he did sign Anthony. He did mm. authorise United to spend... £85 million on him. He's, he's the second most expensive signing that United have ever made. And he's just not been good enough. So, I think for, for United to move forward, they're going to that, they're gonna have to get that side of things right. Obviously, you know, middle of the season, that's not the time to do it. I think Ten Hag's bigger concern right now is just how to get a tune out of the players he has. And unfortunately, we've not seen that once this season. You know, they've played 14 games. They've lost seven of those. You could argue that they didn't deserve to win any of them. The, the, the only comfortable victory they've had all season was against Palace's reserves in the Carabao Cup in September. There's an argument that they could have lost every other single game that they've played this season, and that's how bad that they've been. 
And that's why there's no confidence heading into this Newcastle game that even against Newcastle's reserves, they're going to get the job done. You know, even we talk about the game of the weekend, Fulham away. You know, imagine a Man United team heading into a game at Fulham away with the greatest respect to Fulham and thinking, well, we might lose here. But that's where United are. There's just no faith that this team is going to turn up and put in any kind of performance because we've just not seen it this season. It's interesting we put up that graphic, that ten, I'm not sure we can put that up again, that signing's under Ten Hag. Can you imagine Manchester City, Arsenal, like, battling out for any of those players? It's just not, not existent, is it? They're just... Oh, well, uh, they've signed a squad player in Jeremy Docker who was 50 or 60 million. I mean, uh, was he even on the... I mean, <laughs> you could throw three wingers in from Man United and say, who would you have, Docker or any of them? I mean, Akanji at 15, 20 million. You know, they, they, it's not all... Man City haven't all been about, you know, going out and, and, and OK, Erling Haaland had a clause in his contract, but about going out and spending 100 million on the Jack Grealishes and others. They have signed some, some, some acute... Some, uh, They've had some acute signings, so uh, the one thing is, is I, 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 what I would say is, it's everywhere we talk about not playing well, right? And I, I get that. Listen, lots of players have periods and they don't play well, and going to a club, big clubs too much for them. But we'll pick out the two wingers because you know, Jaden Sancho in particular, uh, and Rob mentioned Anthony, and it is crystal clear that from day one he's been, you know, a flash Harry, right? From, from pretty yeah. much from day one. You know, he scored, scored the odd great goal against a Charlton or whatever it was in the Carabao Cup last year, but then... But it's, it's not the fancy tricks and the, the flash. It's If you're not playing well at a club, right, and you're being selected, the one thing that you do, you don't swan around the field as if you are the big I am. Like Eric Cantona used to, and we both played in that era, Eric Cantona used to walk about with the chest puffed out because he knew he was one of the best and he delivered on the field. He had that arrogance about him. We see the same kind of arrogance, certainly from Anthony, walking about the field. But what's he delivering? Yeah. So go out there and work hard. Just grafting, 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 grafting. Do you know what? The fans, I think, will have at least some appreciation for that. Why else there be a frustration there? Sancho, in some sense, Brun uh, uh, Marcus Rashford, and definitely, Anthony, if you look at those guys and you look at the work rate, it has been bang average. Yeah. So that's the least United fans can expect. How's it got to that point, Rob? I mean, it, the, the fact that we're talking about this now, this early in, in, in the season, is, is a surprise, I think, because they did make a step forward last season under Ten Hag. Yeah. It did look like it was starting to get better. I think the expectation was that he would get more of his own players in again over the summer and they would again take another step forward. They perhaps weren't ready to challenge for the title, but they would get closer to City and to Arsenal and look like, you know, maybe in a year's time that they would get close to, to challenging for the title. The problem is they've taken such, or, or appear to have taken such a giant step back. That's the biggest shock really now. And, you know, probably we should have been talking about Ten Hag, you know, starting to mould this team into the way that he wants to play, more of his own players, you know, a bit of that kind of the Ajax flair. But instead, we're talking about Ten Hag possibly his job being under pressure. And, and, and that's where we are, because in the past, United have got to this position and not performed well at the start of seasons. And Jose Mourinho has been sacked mid-season. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been sacked mid-season. And at Man United, you, you, you tend to find that things unravel very, very quickly, that once things start to go bad, they get worse and worse and worse to the point where the only change that the club can make is to sack the manager. And I'm not suggesting that's where we are now with Ten Hag because the United are desperate for it to work under Ten Hag, absolutely desperate. But ultimately, results will will reveal everything. And if results don't get better very, very quickly, then he's going to become more and more under pressure. The fans are starting to gonna, are going to lose faith. There's already, you know, fans inside the stadium. We heard him heard them boo the the substitution of of Hoyland at the weekend. Fans are starting to question an awful lot about his recruitment decisions, about his in-game management. And when you get to that point, it's very, very hard to turn it around. And I would be worried for Ten Hag at the moment. If things don't improve drastically, very, very quickly, in terms of performances and results, he's going to be under an awful lot of pressure. And, and the only change when you reach that point that a club can make is to sack the manager, rightly or wrongly, because you can't sack the entire squad. It's just impossible. The only change you can make is to sack the manager. And, and Ten Hag, you know, possibly in, in, in a month or two, is, could look very, very vulnerable. Here where we are, this is exactly where we are now. 
talking about Eric Tenag being sacked. Who ever expected that to be said about a Manchester United who came out with the chest, telling the whole world that so many managers who were in the Premier League, their errors were coming to an end. I remember that video like it, it still rings in my head. This guy looked like he had it all. So many people were excited over what he was offering. Now we are all here asking ourselves questions. Where is this Manchester United squad really going? Because the question is this, if a manager is coming up and now starting to doubt the team that he brought himself and the, he, he, he punishes a normal squad player for his little things and he allows the players with the skills, the ones he respects to get away with so much, it's just crazy. At this moment, he has to get the job done. It's really funny how the, he has, his team has just gone so low. Nobody expected Manchester United to be here. I don't think anyone beginning of the season had thought Manchester United would be this position. But here we are. We are talking about them, wondering if the manager will still be the manager come end of the season. Not even come end of the season, come middle of the season because every single time whenever a manager goes after the players or goes after the squad, like what Jose Mourinho did, he was stagged mid-season. Every manager we have seen, they get sacked whenever they start going after the players. But this is where the problem is. He started, he went after one player. We thought this was Jaden Sancho. So many people were so adamant and they were so were fighting to make it Jaden Sancho's fault why things were happening but he has been quiet he has been focused and he has been doing everything and we still hear some rumors that are coming out that this guy is still following the player who's changing in his car who's changing in his car because he cannot go change in his own closet so many bad apples and now the players if they want to speak about this to try to say something to the manager they are afraid that they'll join jordan sancho a player who stood up for himself now we are here wondering exactly where is he going because Cristiano Ronaldo talked about this Sancho even though he did not say so much but he gave us a hint about this now we are seeing it that this guy there's so much favoritism and this guy has signed so many players he's not even proving it in the game that is it and he has come out live on television telling the players that he does not believe in them he does not trust in them i'm not twisting these words whenever a manager is telling you that he will never play the football that made him successful in another club because he doesn't have the players in the club that is he in he's literally telling the players that i have all of you lot but i don't believe in you so there is just so much that is happening in the squad there's just so much happening under this manager that we no longer know where to look forward to now and it's just a matter of time before he gets booted out i know tenago sucked this season because everything that is doing it's all building up and leading up to there him being sucked it's just a matter of time to be honest we are just counting our minutes now as the rival fans we always do that but he's getting sad. That's for sure, I'm telling you. Anyway, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. I want to hear this guy's prediction over the game. It's funny, isn't it? We've all gone for a Manchester United win tomorrow, but what, of course, we saw midweek against Copenhagen, even if there is a one moment of optimism, you go into then the game at the weekend and it takes very little then to take the wind out of that. And that's because... And that's because the players aren't taking responsibility. You know, we can... Yes, the manager always carries the can. But, you know, to, to Craig's point about Anthony in particular, everybody at some stage in their career, it's not, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't go right. And every single coach will always tell you the best way of turning it around is working through it. And the important word being work. Right. And basically it's down to you as an individual to work hard. Chase hard, do everything, just, just work. The problem the United have got is they've got so many players out of form that they're all looking for somebody else to give them the answer. When the answer is always with yourself. It's about working through your problems and whilst you're doing it, you do every single thing you can for the team. And if that means that if you're Anthony and you have to go back and help Dallo out and do it in a professional manner and get in a good position and try and take him wide or whatever, but they all seem to be looking around for somebody else to do it. It doesn't work that way. You have to do it yourself. Even, I mean, we've talked about this. I mean, there's not... What, 
I think the big worry is, is not just re results are the key for any manager, but as big a concern for me as watching them and thinking, right, what are they trying to achieve here? Do they, do you, would you watch Man United, Dan, do you think, my God, they press the hell out of the ball? Well, what do you think when you watch them? They don't. Yeah. They don't press the hell out of the ball. They don't set off teams. They're a, they're, they're a hybrid of sort of nothing. <laughs> they're like, and, and I don't want to go back because it just seems it's the flavour of the month, but it's, I think it's pertinent, and, and Postacoglu and there are, there are others. How can a manager come into such a bang average situation with a team that generally, even against the worst teams in the Premier League, got below 50% possession and have such a sea change? And I know, that, I know it will probably fall away from where it is now, but they'll continue to play the same way, they'll have an identity. How can he do that in such a short period of time? Right? How can Unai Emery come in and just galvanise Aston Villa and get them playing in the period that But he didn't played? Ten Hag do that to a point? Obviously, well, no, no, they got get rid of Cristiano Ronaldo, no, no. moving forward, winning yeah. the Carabao Cup. Yes. He, he did, but they got results. Yeah. But at no point, and even in the Carabao Cup final, they won, didn't play great. At no point did you go, my God, it's exciting to watch this United side again. They were getting results. The problem right. is now they're doing neither. They're doing absolutely neither. And, I just, and, I, and I'd worry for him now that what he was successful at, he was successful at in the Dutch league. And with respect, the Dutch league is weak. Mm. right? The Premier League, we can huff and puff about the teams down the bottom, but it's not a weak league. right? And he's got a big, big problem. So he's got the problem of players with some bad attitude, bad form, injuries, and he is absolutely scratching his head into what he wants his team to do. Final question to you, Rob, and I asked exactly the same thing to Mark yesterday. If not Ten Hag, then who? I mean, that, that's the, the golden question, and it's probably something that will save Ten Hag, or at least, you know, if, if results don't pick up, delay him getting sacked, because there is no-one else. I, I don't see that there is a, a viable candidate to come in and take over. In the past, you know, you had United fans clamouring for um, for Jose Mourinho to come in or for Maurizio Pochettino to, to come in. There's, there's always been a, a standout candidate, but there isn't at the moment. The, the only manager possibly who you could see becoming available in, in the near future is, is Nagelsmann after the, the Euros with, with Germany. But again, if you were to sack Ten Hag tomorrow, you would need an interim. And we've seen in the past that United have done that. It's not really worked out. You know, they had Ralph Ragnick a couple of years ago and he was absolutely dreadful. So there is no one else, and that's why. Well, that's one of the reasons why United are so determined for it to work under Ten Hag. But they can't run away from results. You can't just pretend that everything's fine when you're losing every week. You can't go through a season. United, United have lost seven of their 14 games. They can't lose every other week for the rest of the season and have Ten Hag be safe. Uh, and then it becomes, you, who do you find? You have to find someone in, in that scenario. I just think United at the moment are so desperate for it to work, they're not even considering it. Um, but ultimately, it, it will depend on, on results. And if they don't pick up soon, Ten Hag will have to go. The most important thing that has been mentioned here, that it has now come to a point where Manchester United are just so desperate for this to work that they're not even looking at how terrible they are now as a team. Because they haven't done anything. You know, the question that is being asked is this, of course, Eric Tenag was bought to Manchester United because of what he had done to Ajax and what he had done this this Eric Divisi gave team that everyone loves and we talked about it. But now Craig, I think, is coming up with something that is really interesting when you look at it from a somebody's eyes. The 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 Dutch league is weak. Any team in the Premier League, Spurs did it, Liverpool did it. Any team that is just in the top four of the Premier League can go beat Ajax. Even some have beaten them under Terry Eric Tenag. But there was something about his ball, the way he played, which made him so exciting. And he came last season. Of course, we can talk about this. Last season, Manchester United didn't really play football. They were not really playing exciting football, but they were winning the games. But now in this season, now the worst thing that they're doing now is that they're not winning the games. And they're also not playing good football. So there's so much that a lot of people can call out to. And this guy keeps coming out and saying that he's improving, keeps getting the keepers that he wants through throwing a players like David Jagger out on the bus saying that they're not giving him what he wants. He is doing everything that you'd expect a manager who's going to give you something to smile about do. is doing it, but he's producing nothing. And because he's producing nothing, 
it's it's coming back to this stand now the whole world is talking about it who when would he be fired because he's giving manchester united nothing even the guys who believed in him right now the united fans i believe now they've turned against him because he's not giving them what they're looking for you'd expect him to change that you'd expect him to show that there's leadership rather than to focus on his job to try to make the team play better what is he doing he's coming after the players if he's not coming after an individual player he's calling them the whole dressing room that he doesn't trust them how does that help any team to build anything that is meaningful how does that help a manager to build something that can move on to something it's just terrible and we are at a point where manchester united as a club are so keen on this tenag, tenag thing to work that they don't even know where, where else to look forward for another manager they don't even know who else to call out they don't they don't know who else to do what else to do they don't know that's where the problem is we talk about nangas man we talk about this i have an idea why can't you just do like what Tottenham Hotspurs did? Stop with the big name managers. Stop calling the contest. Stop looking for these managers who have done it before. Can you go look for a player, a manager like Poster Kogl? I have an idea. Go get the Wolves manager. Because he seems like he knows how to get his team working. Because Manchester United needs workers, needs people who are going to fight for the badge. Because at this moment, they're not there. And one thing that Craig was talking, which I think is really important that so many people are not looking at. He was talking about the importance of having players who are going to fight for the badge and, and still not give them the skill that they need, but still fighting, moving left and right, trying to help out for the team. Rooney used to do it. Rooney would actually sacrifice himself in a match every single time for Manchester United for the badge. All the all the 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 Erica, all the players we talk about of Manchester United who are known for doing good. All the players we talk about, the Roy Keane who would fight in the ground for the for this club. We don't have that. We have this touch me not players. And the problem, and Craig has mentioned it, is this. Whenever the boy is on another territory, if you are forward and you see the boy in the midfield, no forward is going to think, let me go try and help my team so that we attack. They are all looking at, no, Rashford has to do it. And Rashford is saying, no, Anthony has to do it. And Anthony is saying, no, Hoyland has to do it. It's all about the blame game. And we are seeing it in the pitch. And that is all because of the coaching what is the manager saying you know it's funny that liverpool we most has done so much in the world of football but you still see him coming back to try and help out with what uh, likes of trent alexander arnold you can see dominic sobesla of course he's still new but he's been pressed all over the what he with what he's doing but you see Klopp sh shouting at him to come and help at the back and he's doing it why can't he do it? Cody Gakpo, even Nunes, the one that everyone comes after, he comes back in the midfield to win the balls. Why is that not happening in Manchester United? You'd expect a 30-year-old or 30-something years Casemiro to become the man who fights for this team. How does that even help the squad? How does that even help Manchester United to go forward? so many questions that are being raised here and so no we still don't have actually the right answers to be asking or the right answers to actually help this so this is why manchester united are not gonna look like they'll build anything under eric Tenag, and this is why they'll keep going down because the glazers are not gonna suck him because they don't know who else to call but i'm coming up with an idea go get somebody like a poster Kogu somebody nobody has eyes on somebody who can come and try to make the team become a team again start working together start to build something meaningful so that they can get something because if that doesn't happen we will still be here talking about where exactly is manchester united going let me know your thoughts in the comment section i hope a lot of people have learned something or heard something from what i'm saying because this cannot continue this is a big club that is dying each and every day and everyone now they have lost it they're all focused on the glazer but not only asking the manager what he's supposed to do the questions they're letting eric tenner getting away with the matter how can he tell us that he doesn't trust a team that he has now spent almost 18 months building it's crazy click the like button subscribe to connect i'm out i hope I'm kind of to hear the comment sections and what you guys will be saying there.